different things. So, right, so we are going to continue looking at non-binary TCH codes. And towards the end of last class, I gave an example. It was a big window of example. Hopefully, I didn't uh, follow too much on that example. Otherwise, it would have been uh, really, really bad. Okay, so let me go through and do this once again in quite detail. So, we said n equals 10, q equals 9. And I kind of made a lot of statements which suggested that g of 9 remember 9 is not prime, right? So 9 is a composite number. So G of 9 is not 0 to 8 modulo 9. That is not G of 9. Okay. So I made some statements which kind of maybe maybe people felt it was like that. So how do you construct G of 9? Yeah, G of 3 squared, right? So you need to find a primitive polynomial of degree 2 over G of 3 and then define this as A plus B alpha, right? A, B, and G of 3. Uh, so alpha squared plus alpha plus 2 equals 3. So some primitive polynomial has to be set to be equal to 0. So that's GF9. So so after that things were okay. No, I mean I think so if you want to find the primitive tenth root of unity, GF81 will have it. Yes, GF81. If you say some beta in GF81 is primitive, we notice that uh, 10 n equals 10 divides order of beta which is what 80 right so order of beta is 80 and 10 divides 80 so you notice that order of beta per 8 is going to be equal to okay order of beta per 8 will be order of beta is 80 so order of beta per 8 is going to be 10, right? So 10, which is what I want. A is equal to 6, 5, 10, right? Right? So beta, when you raise it to the power 80, it will become 1. So if I have beta power 8, I have to raise it to the power 10 to get 1. Okay? So that's a simple rule. I and mean, you can also use the complicated formula, but that's, that's the rule you have to use to figure out this kind of order. So this is this is what I want. I want an element whose order is 8 in some extension field of 9. Okay? And 9 square gives you that answer. Okay? So once you have that, that, that's the starting point and then what do you do? You form cyclotomic cosets from modulo 10 multiplication by 9. Okay, and that part was okay. We did that. There, was, there were two, two solution sets and then we have 1, 9, 2, 8, right? 3, 3 what? 3 times 9 is? 27, 27 mod 10 is 7, right? So 3, 7 and then 4, 4, 6. Okay, so this part was okay. And then that that means when you do x plus 10 minus 1, of course you'll have x minus 1 and x plus 1. I made some statements saying this x minus 1 is the same as x plus 8. Okay, so that is completely bogus. Okay, so that's not wrong. That's not correct. Okay. Actually it's, it's okay to say plus 8 because in this case it works out to be okay, but Let's not let's not say that the spirit in which I said it was wrong. Okay, how do you convert x minus one? Okay, of course you have so many other factors, but what is x minus one? Mod. It's not n. It's mod. No, it's not mod ten. What should I? So minus one is in what field? GF nine or okay nine. Okay, so in GF nine, how do you convert minus one? Minus 1, 2 becomes what? Let me see. Characteristic is? See, in GF9, characteristic is actually 3. Okay, so, minus 1 you have to do modulo 3. Okay, so, minus 1 will actually go to x plus 2. Okay, so, that is the correct thing. Actually, it turns out plus 8 and plus 2 have the same same thing modulo 3. Okay, so, it's, plus 8 is not wrong, but the way I said it, it made it sound like I have to do mod 9, okay, mod 9 is meaningless, okay, so it's completely wrong, you should not do that, this guy becomes x plus 2, okay, remember that, that's important, okay, and then you have x plus 1, and then you have other factors, so how do you find the term corresponding to 1, 9 for instance, okay, so the 1, 9 would uh, contribute x minus, right, beta power 8 times what, x minus, x minus okay right this is these numbers the numbers in the cyclotomic corset represents the power of 
the primitive nth root of unity. The primitive nth root of unity is beta power 8. Okay, so if you have 1, it should be beta power 8. And if you have 9, what should it be? Beta power 72. Okay, so that's it. Okay, to multiply these things together, you will get some uh, polynomial in G of 9 only. Okay, so that, that is also true. That will also happen. Okay, so so far, so far, so on, you can find all the polynomials. Okay, so keep that in mind. Yesterday, so I was pointing out that this minus 1 doesn't become, you should not do modulo 9 or anything. Okay. okay, so minus 1 is not modulo 9, okay, modulo 9 is meaningless, okay, remember in, in GFQ equal to 9 and all, the characteristic is 3, so we have to do modulo 3, okay, so it is actually x plus 2, okay. So that is the factorization, so once you have this factorization, you can take generator polynomials, okay, so take any divisor of x pattern minus 1, that will be a generator polynomial, it will have a certain degree and that will tell you what to do with these things, is that okay? Okay, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, so if you want to explicitly simplify this, you need to construct uh, GS81, okay, at least you should know some uh, primitive polynomials and all that, it is a bit complicated. So we are going to skip that, but this is the this is the way in which it is done, is that okay? Right, so, so let me do a slightly more uh, practical sounding example. So we will take q to be equal to 4, okay. So this is more natural, we have uh, characteristic 2, okay. So I want BCH codes over GF4, okay, that is what I want, okay. So n has to be odd now, right. And a GCD of n comma q to be 1, which means n has to be odd, it cannot be even, okay. So we can take n to be anything, so let us say we take n to be 15, okay, this is for, this for the sake of question, okay. So the first thing is, why will you have a primitive 15th root of unity, right? And the characteristic you are looking at is 2, right? So you need 4, 4 square, 4 power 3, etc. 4 square itself has it, okay? So you can take alpha belonging to g of 16, for example. Okay, so if you do that, you would get, uh, you would get an element of order 15, okay? So after that, I have to now do cyclotomic process modulo 15 under multiplication by 4, okay, remember that, it is 4, it is not 2, because I have 2 equals 4, I want dph codes over gf4, not gf2, if I wanted gf2, then I have to of course do multiplication by 2, so remember that is the, that's the biggest change when you go to non binary bch codes, okay, so 0 will be by itself, okay, so after that you will have 1, 1, 4, right? That is it. Four, 4 times 4 is 16, modulo 15, it becomes 1. 2, 8, 32 becomes 2 again, okay? And then you have 3, 12, 48 becomes 3 again, okay? So, 3, 12. And then 4 is covered. 5 will be, I think, by itself. Okay, 5 is a single term guy. 6, 9, that is it. Right? So, 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 so one thing to remember is this alpha is in GF16 and that is 4 squared, right? So, any cyclotomic coset will have either 2 guys or 1 guy only. Nothing else is possible. Okay, so, that is something you can keep in mind. And then 7, 13, what? 13, right? Yeah, I think what he means, 12. And then 11, 14. Okay, the only thing that is missing is 10. 10 is a single 10 by itself. Okay. So this is how x power 15 minus 1, x power 15 plus 1 factors over gf4. We know the factors over gf4. Uh, 2 quite well, right? So, we know this very well, but this is over GF4, so the factorization changes. So, if of course, our x plus 1, I am sorry, it is ok, I am in characteristic 2, right? So, q is 4, right? Once I have q to be power of 2, I am in characteristic 2, so minus 1 plus 1, everything is the same. Only when I have characteristic 3 or something, like in the previous case, when we looked at q equals 9, characteristic is 3, so you have to worry about the minus sign, ok? 
So, so here everything is plus, there is no problem. Okay. So, x plus 1 will be there, and then you also have 5 and 10. Okay. So, both ways occur by themselves. Does it make sense? Alpha power 5 and alpha power 10, do they belong to GF4? That's true, right? See, GF4 is a subfield of GF4 squared. Okay. And now do you find the primitive element of GF4 and GF4 squared? You have to find an element of order. Order what? What is the order of the primitive element of GF4? 3. Okay, so you have to find an element of order 3 in GF16. Okay, and that will automatically generate the GF4 for you. Okay, that will be a primitive element in GF4. Okay, so because all these things work out, if you want to go back and look at the subfield idea. So 0, 1, alpha power 5, alpha power 10 is actually GF4. Okay, since this is the copy of GF4 that is sitting inside GF16. Okay, and then you have the other guys. So for instance here, x plus alpha times x plus alpha power 4. Okay, you can see the way the multiplication is going to work. If you multiply these things out, you get x squared. Okay, you will get something in the middle. Then there you will get alpha power 5. What will you get in the middle? Okay, so let us say primitive. So let me say alpha power 4 plus alpha plus 1 plus 0. Okay, so what will you get in the middle? 1. Okay, so 1 is basically x. So that is clearly a polynomial in GF4. And it will also be irreducible. We know it will be irreducible, right? <coughs> it has to work out that way. And then what else is there? x plus alpha square times x plus alpha power 8. So let us try to simplify that. That is going to be x square plus again x plus alpha power 10. Right? I would get alpha square plus alpha power 8 is 1. See, you know, you just square this, you get alpha power 8 plus alpha square plus 1 equals 0. Those are no characteristic 2, so none of the cross terms will survive. It will go away when you square it. So, clear, clearly, this is also a polynomial in GF4, and you can quickly check that it is irreducible. It is very easy to check degree 2 polynomials, uh, theoretic polynomials for irreducibility, right? But again, anyway, I know it has to be irreducible because it is coming from the factorization of x plus 15 plus 1. Okay? And then you have x plus alpha part 3 times x plus alpha part 12. Here the middle term is a little bit more complicated. But what will it be? Okay, the last term is just 1, but what will the middle term be? Alpha part 3 plus alpha part 12, what is that going to be? Alpha square plus alpha plus 1 and that is going to be? It has to be something. It has to be either 0 or 1 or alpha part 5 or alpha part 10, right? It cannot be anything else. So, what is that? You should have some table in your previous notes of GF16, yes. Alpha part 3 plus alpha part 12. Alpha part 10, okay. So, it is going to be alpha part 10 x. It is very believable, okay. And then you have the other terms, so, so if you want, I can do x plus alpha power 6 times x plus alpha power 9. That is going to be x squared plus something here plus 1. What will that be? Alpha power 6 plus alpha power 9. Alpha power 5. Okay, so that is quite easy to see why it has to be alpha power 5, right? You can multiply this by alpha power 5 and you will get alpha power 9 plus alpha power 6 plus alpha power 5 equals 0. So, alpha power 9 plus 6 has to be equal to alpha power 5. Okay, so, these are some simple minor tricks you can use to get to the answer quickly. So, I am not done with the factorization. It is continuing on here. So, you have x plus alpha power 7 times x plus alpha power 13. Okay, and then you have x plus alpha power 11 times x plus alpha power 14. Okay, so what will this give what I do? Alpha power 5x plus 5 and this one will be
alpha bar 10. Okay, so what about x square plus x plus 1? Why is that not showing up here? Sorry? Yeah, see exactly. Keep that in mind. We are now dealing with GF4, right? X square plus X plus 1 is not an irreducible polynomial of degree 2 over GF4. So it won't show up here in the factorization. It should not show up. If it shows up, then you have made a mistake. Okay? Because alpha power 5 and alpha power 10 are roots of that uh, polynomial. Okay, so this is why we factor X power 15 plus 1. And you can do a factorization over GF4 now, not just GF2. Previously you could do over GF2. Now you can do a factorization over GF4. So, so if you want GFX over GF, so if you want possible GFX, okay, so you can take possible GFX. Okay, you can you can do a lot of things. So, for instance, I might I might want to take uh, x squared plus x plus alpha plus five times uh, I don't know what can we take x squared plus x plus alpha plus ten. I mean, so any any product of these polynomials, right? Factors that we got here would be a possible GFX. But in case if I want to design a BCH code, okay, so suppose I want to design BCH code over GF4, okay, with n equals 15, okay, so I have to do it carefully, right? So if I want to do BCH codes, if I take say t equals 1, what should my GFX be? LCM of minimal polynomial of only the no 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 should be careful here. So when you say t equals one, what is the formula for GFX? It's LCM of minimal polynomial of alpha, right? So just alpha will come. Okay, so well, so you have basically minimal polynomial of alpha. What is the minimal polynomial of alpha? Minimal polynomial of alpha is this guy, right? So it's x squared plus x plus alpha pa psi. Is that okay? Remember, I'm not looking at minimal polynomial of alpha over GF2, in which case the answer is easy, x power 4 plus x plus 1. Now I want the minimal polynomial of alpha over GF4. Okay? For so GF4, you have x squared plus x plus alpha pa psi. Is that okay? So this guy here. You see that? Okay, so very similar method in GF2. If you start with alpha, you can't start. You can't start with just one and four. You'll go to one, two, four, and eight. Okay, so if you take these two guys and multiply them together, you will get x plus four plus x plus one. Okay. It has to work out that. Way. Okay, but now in GF4, I can start with GF4. So I can have my polynomial over GF4. So this becomes my minimal polynomial. Is it okay? No, 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 see, that's why I said it's the code is over GF4. You see that? It's not a binary BCH code, it's a non binary BCH code. That's why I said B. It's a four-ary BCH code. Okay, so BCH code is over GF4. It's not it's not a binary BCH code. Binary means I know the answer already. I mean I don't have to do all these things. We've done this several times. Okay, so this is non-binary, so we're doing it in some detail. So degree is two, so what is K? Thirteen, right? So you have fifteen, thirteen, three codes. So in fact, this will be an NDS code. Okay. So if you go to t equals two, what do you get? Okay. So did I get this right? No, I think I think I'm wrong here. I'm wrong here. Maybe I'm wrong here. Am I wrong here? See, alpha and alpha square don't have the same minimal polynomial, right? So I should be careful here with the LCM. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's what I thought. It cannot be an MDS code. Something is wrong there. So it has to be actually, so let me take that back. I'm sorry. Let me be careful with these examples. There's something wrong with that. So this has to be LCM of M alpha and M alpha square, right? So let me do that carefully again. I'm sorry. So you non binary, you'll pay some attention. It's very easy to go wrong. Okay, GFX is for the LCM of these two guys. In the binary case, M alpha and M alpha square of X are the same. Okay, but notice when you go over GF four, this is your M alpha, right? This is M alpha. What is M alpha square? 
this guy, right? So, so it becomes a different polynomial, okay? So, uh, I guess you're, you're getting back your same old uh, uh, binary BCH code, which is a bit of a uh, dummy thing here. So, let me just make sure I'm doing this correctly. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so you have to get alpha and alpha squared. Okay, so otherwise it won't work. Yeah, okay. So, the next thing will change. Okay. All right. So, you have this m alpha and m alpha squared. So, in fact, when you multiply those two together, you will end up getting x power 4 plus x plus 1. You can check this. Okay. So, you can multiply these two together and you will get x power 4 plus x plus 1. You have to get it, right? So, it's basically x plus alpha, x plus alpha power 4, x plus alpha square, x plus alpha power 8. I know how to do the multiplication. It has to be that. Now, if you do t equals 2, you get g of x to be. So, now something nice will happen. You have x of m alpha of x, m alpha square of x, m alpha power 3 of x, then, and then m alpha power 4 of x. Okay. But here you will see these two guys are the same. Am I right? Alpha and alpha power 4 have the same minimal polynomial over g of 4. Then alpha square will come, alpha power 3 will also come. Okay. So you have the product of these two guys x squared plus x plus alpha power 5 times x squared plus x plus alpha power 10, which is actually x power 4 plus x plus 1 times x squared plus alpha power 10 x plus 1. Is that okay? Alright? So, here for k equals t equals 1, we simply get k equals k equals 11. Okay? Right? You won't get anything else. So, 15 minus 4. Here you will get what? t equals 2, we will get k equals 9. Okay? So, that is a bit different from the binary case. For binary case, for t equals 2, you would already get 7. Okay? So, you get 15, 7. So, here you get only k equals 9. Okay? So, for 2 and a correcting, if you go over g of 4, you get a slight advantage in terms of uh, in terms of dimension. Okay, so this is this is understandable. We had this before also. Okay, that's how it works. Is it okay? So this is how we do uh, BCH codes in non-binary. Okay, so you have to pay some attention. We, we, we are so used to the binary case that uh, mean very often we we'll make mistakes assuming uh, some things are the same, like I did several times. Okay, so you have to, be, you have to pay a lot of attention. Make sure. Uh, as a rule, BCH codes will not be M MDS. Okay, so, if you see some MDS kind of property, then you're going wrong from there. Okay, only the Reed Solomon kind of codes will be MDS. Okay, so those will not be MDS. So those are sanity checks you can use to make sure you don't make mistakes. Okay, shall we do one more example? Maybe one more length just to get you comfortable with uh, this idea. Okay, so let's do one more example. Uh, what characteristic shall we use? Two or something else? You're okay with anything, okay? So let's pick uh, let's pick the same q equals four. Okay, so it's interesting enough. It's nice enough. Let's we'll pick a different n. Okay, so let me say I pick n equals uh, twenty one. Okay, we did this before with uh, with uh, binary. So we'll do the same thing with uh, BCH. Okay, so n equals twenty one. All right? Is that a question? No. Are you okay. All right. So this is how we do it. So 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 basically, once again, remember when I do this factoring of x power 15 plus 1, I'm basically finding the minimal polynomials of all the powers of alpha. Okay, but minimal polynomial is not uh, not in binary, but over GF4, some other intermediate field. So I won't get really la larger degree. Okay, so if you see minimal polynomial of alpha with binary coefficients at degree 4, okay, so you have x power 4 plus x plus 1. But if you say GF4 is good enough, you only have degree 2 polynomial. Okay, so it's it's something unusual that happens in finite fields. Okay, usually in uh, real numbers complex, you will only have degree 2, but this is a different personality. Okay, so let us go to this uh, q equals 4 and n equals 21. Okay, the first question is, I have to find n such that 21 divides 4 power 1 minus 1. Okay, so this way of finding it is just try from n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. So 3 here will be good enough. Okay, so I picked a small enough example so that we can do something. So, 3 is good enough. So, you will get 64 or g of 64 to be your uh, element. Okay. So, if you say, say beta and g of 64 is going to Okay. So, you select m equals 3. Then, 
if you set alpha to be equal to beta power what? 3, right? Then order of alpha equals n or 21. This is what I want. Okay, so once you do this, you have your primitive 21st root of unity in a suitable extension field, in an extension field of q. Now you can start doing cyclotomic process to do the minimal polynomial uh, decomposition of x bar 21 plus 9. Okay, so let's do that. We have 0, 1. Remember multiplication by 4 modulo 21. Okay, so 1 will go to 4 and then 4 will go to 16, 16 will go to 64 and that is 1. Okay, so you have to stop there. Okay, so, so nice thing about finding things like m equals 3 is immediately you can figure out some things. Okay, the only two sizes possible for the cyclotomic coset are 1 and 3, no other size is possible. Okay, so that is a useful rule to keep in mind if you are getting confused by this multiplication. Okay, you can quickly use that rule to rule out a lot of cases. So, 2, 8, 11, that is it, right? It has to stop there. I know it has to stop there. It cannot go beyond that. Okay, is that correct? 11 or is this 11 correct? Hmm? 11 into 4 is 44, modulo 21 is 2. Okay, so 3, 12, 6, yeah, stops there. Okay, and then 4 is already there, 5, 20, Seventeen. That's it, right? Okay. Is that okay? So check uh, for yourself. Seventeen times four is what? Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight modulo twenty-one. Sixty-three is the closest multiple, so it becomes five. Okay. And then you have six already there. Then we we'll go to seven. Seven, I think, should be interesting. It should be itself. Okay. Right. Seven fourths are twenty-eight. 28 mod 21 goes back to itself. Okay. How would I know that 7 should be itself? Yeah, I mean, invariably, if you have a factor of n, something will go wrong. Okay, so that's something simple rule to remember. Okay, usually if, if n is a composite number and you have a factor of n, something will go wrong. That's, that's one rule to remember. There are other rules also. I think about these. Okay, 8, 9, 15. I am sorry? Yeah, I mean it is just a rule. <laughs> I mean it is one, one rule of thumb. I mean it is sometimes, sometimes works, sometimes it does not work. It also. Yeah. <laughs> I mean you can, you can have several rules like you said. I mean it's, so, whenever you have a multiple of a divisor of 21 n, pay attention. Okay. does not mean there will always be one, but something can happen. Okay, that is all. So, it is a good rule to keep in mind. 9. 36 is what? 15, 18, and then that should be it. Right? 18 fourths are 80, 72, 72 is 9. Okay. And then you have 10, 10, 19, 19 fourths are 76, that should be me, 13. 13 fourths are 52, that takes me back to 10. Okay, so that gives me uh, some more guys, and then are we done yet? 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 is the only missing guy, isn't it? 14 will be by itself. Is that correct? I think that's it. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, that's it. Okay, you can also count it in another way. Okay, so now it is a little bit more painful to write it down, but anyway, so I know the degrees for m alpha, m, m alpha, m alpha square, m alpha by 3, what all occurs everywhere, I know the degrees, so I do not have to really worry about the explicit form for these polynomials, but some I can find out, okay, for the singleton guys I can find out, this will be x plus 1, what will be this, x plus alpha by 7 or beta by 21, right, so I know that beta by 21 is actually gf4, right, so gf4, if you look for a copy of GF4 and GF64, it will be 0, 1, beta bar, 21, beta bar 42. Okay, so you have to find an element of order 3, right? Order 3 is 21. Okay, so that is why 
it works out that way. So beta for 21 is okay. So this will be x plus beta for 42. Okay, so there are other ways. I mean, if you want, you can find out. It's a bit painful. Okay, so I'm going to skip it. So let's let's just go to BCH codes. Remember, I'm saying over g of 4. Okay, so it's not binary. N equals 21. And if I say d equals 1, I would have what? I need g of x to be okay, LCM of m alpha and m alpha square. Remember, m alpha and alpha square are not the same. Okay, so you have m alpha multiplying m alpha square of x and that has degree 6 so k becomes 15 ok so as it turns out you don't gain much if you go to t equals 2 what would happen g of x is m alpha m alpha squared then you have to have m alpha power 3 but m alpha power 4 you don't have to have right because it's already come so degree is 9 so k becomes 12 Ok, so that's a bit of an advantage here. Yeah. So if you go to t equals 3, let's go t equals 3. We'll have m alpha, I'll skip the half x, ok. So m alpha squared, m alpha power 3, m alpha power 4 you can skip. 5 you have to have, right? What else do you have to have? Both 5, 6 is already there, ok. So only 5 you have to have. So k becomes 9, right? You just have degree 12. Oh, only these four are enough. Okay. So let's say we do non-binary BCH code. It's not not very hard. Yes. So of course the most interesting non-binary BCH code is the Reed Solomon code. Okay, yes, go ahead. You can't start with seven. It needs to be a primitive. Uh, nth root of unity. Yeah, but consecutive roots, the powers of which have to be, uh, okay, so you are saying d equals 7. No? Okay. Oh, you want to start at 7 instead of starting at 1. Okay. So yeah, even you can do that. You can do that. And then in which case you will have just four is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's correct. Okay. So those are those are smart things you can do. Okay. So when you when you look at non-binary BCH codes, crazy things like that can happen. Okay. So I think that is correct. No, no, no. The common difference has to be relatively prime to twenty one. You can't take seven and four. So that that is one thing you have to pay attention to. But you can try these tricks, you will get some minor gains, but it will not be that big. Okay. So it's the same as saying, see instead of starting at 1 and 2, I can start at 0 and 1. Okay. So instead of starting 7 and 8, I can start at 0 and 1. That will give you one uh, advantage. In, in GF4 and all, that's useful. Start including 0. Uh, GF2 you usually don't have to because 1 itself will include 2. So you can't do anything better than that. So if you put the x plus 1 also you will get 4 minimum distance, it does not help you. But in GF4 and all because 1 does not include 2, you can include 0 and gain something. That is correct. Okay, so that is a good point. Okay. So once you go to these non-binary codes, all this narrow sense, primitive and all make a difference. If it is not narrow sense, you will get some other uh, minimum distance expressed. Okay, so you can pay attention to that. That is a good point that you made. Anything else? Okay, so let's uh, move on to Reed Solomon codes, which are which are basically the most interesting non-binary uh, BCH codes. So for Reed Solomon codes, what you do is you make the following choice. Okay, you first of all pick Q to be some some prime power. Okay, so let's say some prime power. Okay, and then you take n to be Q minus one. Okay, so this is the choice you make for each Solomon codes. Okay, so when you do that, so basically each Solomon codes are QRE codes of length Q minus 1. Okay, so in, in terms of uh, BCH code definition, non-binary BCH codes, this is how you do it. Okay, so if you do that, the first thing that you notice is, 
if I pick alpha alpha to be GF cube in the then what do I have? All of alpha equals equal z. Okay, so that's the first uh, observation. So I don't have to go to any field greater than GF cube. I immediately have my uh, element of order. Okay, let's do the atomic process. Okay, so we'll have zero. Okay, then we have one. So circuit atomic process, remember under multiplication by Q modulo Q minus 1. Okay, so what will happen if I multiply 1 by Q? I get 1 by itself. Okay, if I take 2, what will happen? It will always be 2. So in fact, I will have to Q minus 1, Q minus 2, I will get simultan simultan elements. Okay, so remember why is that? I times Q modulo Q minus 1 is what? So the same as I. Right? I modulo Q minus 1 if you like, but I. Okay? So it's a very funny little thing to have. So basically what happens is all the cyclic atomic process become single dumps. Okay, and alpha itself is the primitive element of GFQ. Okay. So if I want uh, a non-binary BCH construction with T equals 1, I should take GFX to be 1. Okay? x minus alpha times x minus alpha square that's it so i will always have degree of g to be 2 times t and k will be n minus 2 all the time okay so this will this will be true for arbitrary t okay if you take an arbitrary t g of x is going to be x minus alpha x minus alpha square all the way down to x minus alpha power 2 t Okay, because there is no question of having any common factor, everything is a singleton. Okay, so you get the same. So essentially what you are using is you are using this factorization for x plus x minus 1. Okay, I know that this is x minus 1 times x minus alpha times x minus alpha square all the way down to x minus alpha plus 2 minus 2. So you are using the basic factorization of x plus q minus 1. Since my code is anyway over GSQ, right? So it doesn't matter, I don't have to really combine anything. So I get everything and here I have k to be n minus 2 and my code becomes MDS. Okay, so this is an MDS code. Okay. So this is the way to bring in Reed Solomon codes from the cyclic DCH codes point of view. So now if you want a different n, if I want n to be less than q minus 1, what do I do? I simply shorten. Okay, it doesn't lose any MDS property, the same distance goes through and I go, I go to the other direction. Okay, but we came from a different direction, right? Right? We looked at the zeros first. Okay, so what are the zeros of the theory theory correcting Q R E B C H Reed Solomon code of length Q minus one? It's alpha alpha square all the way to alpha power two t. Okay, I put down the parity check matrix, which essentially enforces the same condition as this GFX. Okay, every code word is a multiple of GFX, which means every code word has zeros alpha alpha square alpha power two t, which means it satisfies the parity check matrix that I had. Seen. Okay, so that's the way to close the loop in terms of these uh, two different ways of doing it. Okay. So in the last 10 minutes, I'm going to give you, there was a problem in the assignment which talked about another way of constructing the Solomon codes. I don't know if you saw it. Okay. You might have uh, seen it. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. It's a very interesting kind of construction. So we'll sign off with that. A lot of people use that construction for proving some results, particularly in the computer science area. Okay. So what is the, what is the construction here? So this is the original construction according to Reed, Reed and Solomon. Okay, so I will call it the polynomial evaluation construction. Okay. So what you do is uh, So let's say you pick an n. Okay, so n is a block length. Okay. So let's say we pick an element alpha in some g of q out of alpha of greater than or equal to n. Okay. So these are similar to what I had before. So and specifically, if you want to, you can pick n to be equal to q minus one. Take alpha and g of q as primitive, then order of alpha will be equal to q minus one. You can do that if you like. Okay, so that's one choice, but in general you can do it. So now what I will do is I will consider uh, the following set. Okay, so let's say f of x some polynomial 
the dot zero plus f one x plus f one s k minus one x power k minus one. Okay, and uh, is that correct? Is that correct? Is that correct? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So each of these f i's are from zero. Okay. Arbitrary, an arbitrary polynomial. So how many such polynomials will there be? Two power k. Okay, that's the number of such polynomials. Right? Some that many polynomials. Now to get a code word of the Reed Solomon code, what I'll do is, okay, I will take my f zero to f k minus one to be the message vector. Okay, so I'll take the message vector. Of zero of one, of k minus one. Okay, so that's a k -ly message, k length message. Now to find the code word, I'll do the following. I will evaluate f set. Let's say uh, alpha, 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 and then alpha squared, right? F of alpha, alpha power three. So until f of alpha, alpha power. Let's say I do that. Okay, so this is my code word. Okay. So my code word has length n. Okay, and it belongs to each code word, uh, each code word uh, position. Okay, coordinate actually belongs to G F Q. Okay, so that's very easy, and that's my that's my concept. Okay, so let's look at minimum distance. Okay, so so dimension is easy. Dimension is what k, right? Loss length is n. Dimension is k. What about minimum distance? Okay, for minimum distance. You have to observe that a polynomial of degree k minus one over G F Q can have at most how many zeros? K minus one zeros. Okay. So if I evaluate this polynomial over n different values, how many of these values can actually be zero? Maximum of k minus one. Right. Of these n coordinates. Only a maximum of k minus one coordinates can be zero. The others have to evaluate the non-zero. Why is that? All these alpha, alpha power n are actually elements of G F Q, right? And over a field, I can have only at most k minus one zeros. So that implies automatically weight of code word is greater than or equal to what? N minus k minus one, which is n minus k plus one. And I know from the simple simpleton down the weight, the minimum weight. Has to be equal to n minus k plus one. Okay, so that's how you go to the MDS property as a polynomial from a polynomial evaluation point of view. Okay, so it turns out this is the same as the Reed-Solomon code. It looks very drastically different, but it is the exact same thing as the Reed-Solomon code. You can go back and check with the assignment that I gave you. There is a problem which shows the relationship between this and the Reed-Solomon code. This is exactly the Reed-Solomon code. If you pick n to be equal to q minus one, in fact, this will be cyclic. Yes, okay, so all those things you can show. It's not very hard. Okay, so you can go back and uh, work it, but this is the basic idea. Okay, so this is the basic idea in the Reed-Solomon code construction. Okay, why why is it MDS? It's because it's related to polynomial evaluation. And polynomial has degree k minus one, so it's, it cannot be n minus k plus one. Okay, so this consecutive roots idea for enforcing the minimum distance is kind of artificial, right? So you have the random one matrix and all that. It seems doesn't seem very fundamental. Okay, if you want to know where it really comes from, it's because of these kind of properties. It's a much more fundamental property. The fact that a polynomial cannot have more than k minus one roots is more fundamental than coming up with some random one matrix and saying its determinant is non-zero. Okay, so this is a nicer construction from that point of view. But it's not. I mean, it's useful, particularly in computer science when people do a lot of theory proofs. They use these codes for some constructions. But in practice, it is not that useful. I mean, it's used actually sometimes in for decoding the latest form of decoding that people have proposed for the Solomon codes. They use these things. Okay. Once again, it came from the computer science side, so we <laughs> use this. But mostly in uh, communication side, people will use the polynomial, the other generator polynomial, parity check matrix. That kind of ideas are more popular. Okay. So, so that's the. So, so there are other checks you can do. For instance, you can check that this code is linear. It's very easy to check that it's linear. If you take two code words and add, you get another polynomial. So of course, it's linear. You can for n equals k minus one, you can check q minus one. You can check that this is cyclic. Okay, so that's a bit more work. You can do it. It's not very hard. You can check that it's cyclic, and then you can also check for for if you evaluate it like this, and if you have k, the the, the corresponding powers of alpha will be zeros of this code word. You can check that. 
if you can use some properties of the field, you can show that it will evaluate to zero. So all those things you can check, and so this becomes exactly the Ritz Solomon code. And if you shorten it, it becomes a shortened Ritz Solomon code, etc., etc. Et all those things you can check. Okay? Did you have a question? Yeah, exactly. So it's the other connection. Okay, so it's it's similar to Reed Miller codes also, right? But there, instead of instead of evaluating it as a, instead of looking at it as a polynomial with coefficients from GFQ, you view it as a Boolean uh, binary coefficient polynomial with multiple uh, variables. Okay, and then you try and evaluate it. So that's that's what makes it non-MDS. You know, I mean, so that those polynomials, multivariable polynomials, don't have such good. Uh, I mean, you don't have such good control over the zeros as you do with arbitrary polynomials. Okay, that that it's not a field, right? So when you look at it, becomes a vector space, and then you have to worry about how that polynomial works and all that. It's, it's a bit more complicated to well understand. Those okay, so I think this is uh, where I want to stop our uh, lectures. So we'll stop here.